Professional wrestling has always been one of the most popular forms of sports and entertainment in the UK. With more events than ever before, and homegrown stars making a name for themselves worldwide, British wrestling is having a real resurgence. But how important are the fans to this? I speak to those that run the companies in the UK and legendary wrestlers and writers to kind of gain an understanding of the importance of fans. If you don't immediately see the beauty in professional wrestling, then you never will. UK fans are crazy, and I mean that in a great way. Come out in front of a crowd, and they're loud, enthusiastic, and they're enjoying themselves. It makes your experience so much better. It's all we talk about at home. My daughter's into it, John Cena pajamas. Just to hear the reaction of the crowd yeah. is, is a great thing, and without them, you're not, you're not going to get a reaction. You're all there for the same, for the same purpose, so it's, you, know, you, you feel like you're, you're, you're one big like, family there. With social media such a part of our everyday life, I also want to have a look at how the modern day wrestling fans' relationship with the industry has changed. They want to be able to meet their wrestlers, um, find out what they think, they want to know every little thing that's happening backstage, they want to know every little minute booking detail. So join me while I take a look behind the scenes and find out why fans matter. Welcome to This Is Wrestling. My name's Martin and I'm a huge wrestling fan. Ever since I was a kid growing up collecting the toys, in my teenage years reading the magazines and all the information online, I've never been able to get enough of professional wrestling. With access to so much more content than ever before, wrestling fans are sport for choice. And with all our heroes coming over and giving meet and greets and uh, VIP talks, how important is it for the UK industry to maintain a relationship with a fan base? And how important are those fans to keeping the UK industry alive? To help me find out the importance of fans, I wanted to start by gaining an understanding of how people in the industry would describe a wrestling fan. The typical wrestling fan, I don't know, I mean the stereotypical one is obviously just like, you know, still living at your mum and dad's 30s, virgin, beard, sweaty, um, bad diet, like, but there's not, I don't, I don't see that many people get, well, don't get, no, I do, I see quite a lot like that, but I see a lot of like the other stuff as well, where it's just, I think that's the best thing about it, it just it, it unites everybody, Every, everybody can be different, you can be like, um, you can be like 30 or you can be 60 or you can be 3 and like if you all like wrestling then it's, that's what keeps you all um, united. It's really difficult to explain wrestling to anyone who doesn't watch it. There's a, a great Vince McMahon quote and he says, if you don't immediately see the beauty in professional wrestling then you never will. And I think that's completely spot on. Describe what a wrestling fan is. Uh, Jeff Jarrett. Before I was a promoter, before I was a wrestler, I was a wrestling fan. And, and it's something that, um, I've, and I've said this saying many, many times, for those who believe no explanation is needed, those who don't believe no explanation will do. And, and that's either you like wrestling or you don't. And if you don't, that's okay. If you do, you know the language I'm speaking. There's nothing better than a great wrestling match. The passion like no other fan of any genre. Fans of pro wrestling are the most dedicated fans in the entire world. Passionate. Wrestling fans are the most passionate people. You know, you, you get super fans of everything that's on TV. You get super fans of sport, music, e everything. But wrestling fans, it's something completely different. There's a, an unbelievable passion. People who are so loyal to what they're watching, who they complain an awful lot. And a lot of people say, you know, wrestling fans are entitled and they, they think that if something doesn't go the way that they want, that they, they may have a problem with that. And yeah, I think that, that can be a bit of a problem, but it's only because they care so much. And the reason that um, what we do at What Culture is, is, is so much fun and so important to us is because we're all just really passionate. We want to see the best possible thing that we can on TV, whether we're right or not. You know, we're just voicing our opinions, um, but yeah, it's, it's all about passion. Uh, the, the emotional connection that, that, that a young wrestling fan carries with him all his life, it's that as a little boy, you live vicariously 
through your favorite, whether it be a villain or, or, or a fan favorite, but you live vicariously through them. And so you have that emotional connection, whether you're a little boy or a little girl and followed it, and then through your teen years and maybe your early university years, you have that emotional connection. And then as you get older through the years, there's nothing better than a fond memory that continues to grow and grow and, and, and almost take a whole life on its own. And it's something that, that I admit I did. I, I can remember matches that I went to when I was 11, 12 years old. And in my mind, oh my God, they're just incredible matches. I've gone back and watched tapes and they don't hold a candle to, to, to the athletic ability today. But it's something here as a wrestling fan that you never let go of. You, you get the feel with, with, with the wrestling, you, you, can, you can pretty much chat to anybody. You know, I've, I've, so I've, I've made, some, made some good friends through, through um, meeting people at events. Um, but you, you don't get the same thing with, 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 with football and, and that sort of thing. You know, you, you don't get the same, you know, you get the same feel from people. I think that's a lot of what being a wrestling fan is. It's it's like harking back to, um, it's your nostalgia, it's your youth. It's like trying to uh, cling onto something that, um, that might not be there now. Where it's like, yeah, I want to just feel like I did when I was a kid, and that's why people still. That's one of the reasons why I think people still watch wrestling. I think there's a lot. There's a lot of wrestling fans out there. It's like it's like coming out. It's like it's like closet wrestling fans. Like you don't realize they are until like you see somebody like I don't know. You'll you'll see somebody will be watching like a botcher mania on a video now. And be like, oh, he likes he likes wrestling. Like that. you see somebody wearing a wrestling shirt and and you and if if you're a fan yourself, then that's an an instant um, conversation starter. I've been attending live wrestling events ever since I was a teenager and I'm hooked. You can't beat the experience of seeing it live, the atmosphere as everyone chants along. But how important are fans when planning for a live tour show? And especially in the UK scene, what would wrestling be like without the fans? Just, just to hear the reaction of the crowd yeah. is, is a great thing and without them you're not, you're not going to get a reaction. Wrestling fans are the, the most important thing to wrestling industry. It's what literally everyone does everything for. Uh, like Eric Bischoff was saying when we, when we talked to him, is it's, it's an industry that's built on emotion. Um, without fans to react the way they do, there's no point in doing anything. Uh, like wrestlers, we, when we book our, our talent, we, are, we basically give them a couple of things we want them to hit and then we let them work it out based on crowd reaction. They're improvisers. They, if something's not working, they'll change it up. If something is working, they listen to the crowd and they and they adapt. Fans, w without them, we have nothing. What we have found over the last two years is that we have grown a dedicated fan base. You see the same ones coming back over and over again. And if you have a really good storyline, then they get really invested. And every time we sit and we do script writing for it, we have to think about what town. What town? Because each town yeah, has a different, completely different. They like a different style. So, to us, it's important because it makes us think as well. You know, you have to think about your market in each different town or each different environment. So, like today, having the family-friendly show to the over eighteen tonight is two completely different setups, yeah. yet the same venue. So it's really difficult to figure it all out and storyline it, but it makes it more interesting. Mm. And it's really nice when you get feedback from the fans and they say, "Oh, I've really enjoyed that." Or I didn't enjoy that so much, why is that happening? And, and getting feedback from them um, is, is just really important for us and for the brand in general and for wrestling. At the end of the day, we're there to tell a story and to, to keep them invested. So you kind of have to sometimes go off the cuff, don't you, on how they're yeah. reacting. Yeah. Actually, on the show, you, you might think it's going to go one direction and then it'll go another complete different avenue depending on how the crowd are reacting on that night. So... It definitely keeps you on your toes. The crowd is so important in making a show good. How important is it for fans? Um, you know, I'll, I'll give you a little saying that my grandmother uh, truly believed in, and it's the truth. The wrestling business is nothing without the paying customer, without the fan. Uh, you can let people in for free. They can stay at home and watch it on TV for free. If you don't have a paying customer, consumer, uh, the business doesn't it ceases to exist, so it's very, very important. Uh, and, and it's something that I've learned through the years. Listen to your fans and you'll earn them one at a time and they will become repeat customers. Obviously the whole point of wrestling is 
for the entertainment of the people watching, i.e. the fans. Um, so obviously the li live crowd experience is one thing you always wor work towards when you're trained to be a wrestler and when you want to become a wrestler. Um, and, and for me, obviously, the crowd is more interested and they're being more entertained, they're more vocal and they're loud and they're enjoying themselves. It makes it much more enjoyable for me in the ring doing the performance. Obviously a big crowd is fun to work in front of, but I've had as much fun working in front of 50, 100 people as I have working in front of thousands, thousands of people, obviously being both ends of the spectrum. The wrestling fan is definitely the most important component in the world of pro wrestling, because without the fans, you could have a product, but if nobody comes to see it, what are you doing it for? Well, without the fans, you've got no uh, no revenue coming in. There's nobody there to watch shows. So of course, and what we do is for the fans, 100%, because that's who buy the tickets, so buy the merchandise, that's who come to the Comic Cons. <laughs> you know, so yeah, it's, it's all about the fans. Without the fans, we've got nothing. Nothing, you know, not not just the uh, breaking even of costs, um, but when the fans are there, you want to make every penny they've paid worth something to them. You know, I've, I've wrestled in some places where 10 people have turned up, but them 10 people have paid the same ticket price as if the place was full. You've got to give them value for money. Um, they, they put an investment into you, you've got to give them their return. Um, without fans, why would we do it? How important are wrestling fans to rest? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's like how important is anything really? If, if you haven't got an audience for it, if people aren't buying tickets, then it's not really going to last that long. So, um, not to like big myself up as a fan, but it is. It's all. It's all about the fans because you know, and and they and you know, we appreciate it as well. We appreciate what we're watching. That's why we keep coming back. We will keep paying with money because we know like how fucking hard the work. We know how hard um, the work and how hard the train and. You know, just to keep that physique, like, you have to, like, trying to keep one of those physiques is mental, like, and they do that professionally and then go out and risk their life as well. But yeah, it's, it's, hopefully it's just as important to them as it is to us. Um, without, the, without the fan base, then, you yeah, know, there's, there's literally no product. As far as the in-ring product goes, um, wrestling fans help in telling the story. Whatever unfolds in the ring, um, without fans cheering on um, and voicing their opinions, uh, it's, it's really, really difficult to tell those stories. So, I mean, WWE, realistically, they could, they could possibly continue to operate without uh, ticket costs because of the enormous amount of revenue that they are now making from the network. Uh, but everyone else relies in, almost entirely on, on ticket sales, so fans are paramount. And if you're not pleasing the fans and they stop buying tickets, then it's an enormous pro problem. The main thing you don't realise is um, how to perform. I think when you get in there, you think, oh, I'm going to have a wrestling match. Mm. But really what you're doing is having a performance. You've got to understand the interaction and working for the crowd, as opposed to just, a lot of problems I see it nowadays all the time, it's one thing I always try and correct, is that people wrestle for themselves or for each other. You know, we're going to have a great match wrestling each other. And they forget that there's 100, 200,000 fans watching them, and they the, should be the focus of what they're doing, not your opponent. You see, everything you do in the ring is performance for the people watching, not for each other. And I, you know, I was guilty of that when I started as well, because you don't understand that necessarily. You train, and you do the basics of wrestling, and you learn this and that, how to sell or whatever. But no one really ever teaches you that interaction and the showing out and the psychology of getting the crowd interested in the match. And uh, I try and teach a little bit of that, as difficult as it is when I, when I do like seminars and training and things like that, because that is more important. I always think the number of holes you make, you know, the number of moves you can do. So that's the most difficult thing, I think, especially coming from judo, where it's all like, try, you know, you'll focus so much on your opponent trying to throw him and get the win, because it's you know, a real sport. Yeah, yeah. Like, that change, just stepping away from that and thinking, right, well, I've got to get my character over with the crowd first. And then I'll think about the illusion of winning a match, and that's, that's the main difference. One, one of my key things is, if I can leave that show, if, if any one of the four kids of ours have been there, if I can leave and the kids have gone, oh, you were great, Daddy, 
then, then that's made it worth it. And they always seem to react that bit more if the crowd have been really behind you. Um, they, they seem to see you as that bit more of a hero of a dad than, than what you are in everyday life. So that's the crowd play a key part in my kids behaving. <laughs> yeah. If the crowd's good, the kids behave. Yeah. And uh, they, they enjoy it more as well. They, they love the interaction. But they also love the basics of it. I mean, two of the kids sit on the merchandise desk and help with that. They love it. You know, they love the setup and, and everything that goes with it. Um, but without a crowd, you have nothing. And I think the, the companies who lose sight of that are, are not in it for the right reasons. You... Your average British wrestling fan wants to go there for a break of reality. Because let's face it, reality is pretty grim at the minute in England with everything that's going on. To come to a wrestling show where you can sit for a couple of hours, eat a hot dog and be entertained and for it to be that sense of non-reality, because let's face it, it's, it's showmanship, isn't it? But to do that and to, to give them that couple of hours of time off, and especially the shows that we do when a lot of them are charity based and you do get a lot of the people who we're supporting come along. So we've had the sick kids and they come and they sit on the front row and they forget that they're ill for just that 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah, that they're even if they able have to, to go early you know, just to see the smile that they've forgotten that they've got to be in hospital tomorrow for chemo yeah. or something like that. And that, that in itself is worth it. You know, it's, it's all about the the little things that create the bigger picture into what we're doing and as long as we stick to our morals of where we began and not not forget where we began then then that's going to give the the wrestling crowd a better performance we listen to them as well yeah uh, you know the crowd the crowd sometimes come up with the craziest ideas you can imagine, <laughs> and, and you kind of have to just smile and wave, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. um, but then when they see something they like, and they come up to you when you're doing the signing and the pictures afterwards, and they say, I'd love to see that match again, I'd love to see this happen. All right, let's do it. Well, if, if it works, yeah, yeah. you know, that, that's what the crowd wants to see. Um, so it's, it's important to us to listen to them as it is for them to come to watch us, you know. Yeah. It's, it's a full circle. Everything we do, we do for them, but they, they feed us what to do next, you know. If, if the react And this is the reason why we're going out of town. We can test the waters with certain things in, in other towns, see uh, you know, and, and see what sort of crowd, because every city, every town has different types of fans. Some, of them, some cities are really, really big on wrestling. Yeah. And the moment they notice a mistake, they get down your throat, but other towns, they're, they're casual fans and they want to just watch it for the enjoyment of that escape of, of everyday life. So we can s test waters with different places and, and see what sort of fans are out there. For, and, and again, hopefully bring them all into that one event, that Body Slams to Cancer, which we build up from, from the day it finishes. It's our WrestleMania. So it's a year long story to get to there. As far as going out and performing, you know, it, it was all about the audience. So I played a heel character for the one time that I ever wrestled um, and trying to wind the audience up, uh, it's really, really difficult, but it's so unbelievably satisfying when you get it right. And you can, I, I mean, I went with Cheap Pete. I went out there and I slagged off uh, Bournemouth where I was, I was competing. But there are guys who are, who are amazing and can just kind of, they sense the audience's feelings and they, they pounce on it and they, they can absolutely control uh, thousands or tens of thousands of people, they've got them in the palm of their hand, um, but it's really, really difficult. As I say, I went out there and I got cheap heat, but guys like, you know, Chris Jericho, uh, The Miz, who are able to just do this incredible heel stuff and know how to really piss off the audience. And the most important thing is, they're making the audience want to see them be beaten. And, and that's what it's all about, because who's going to pay for a wrestling match if it's nothing more than a match? They want to see the bad guys get their comeuppance. Well, you watch it on TV and, 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 and you want to experience what what the, those people are, are experiencing you know, when you're watching the TV programme. So when you get the chance to go, you, you, you want to go and, and experience the atmosphere, um, see, it, see it for yourself. There's been a huge influx of meet and greet experiences at live wrestling events now. I wonder how that's made an impact in terms of the overall experience for a fan how has it made it more difficult for a promoter? And not only that, social media. We can now interact with our wrestlers, our promoters. Has that had a huge impact at all? 
if you if you think about it, go back 15, 20 years ago, you couldn't really meet wrestlers. You know, what I mean? like um, you couldn't go to a um, a WWE event and then meet a wrestler back after. You know, so it was very off limits for a long time. So the only way that you could see your your hero or your you know was to go to a show and see him. But as far as meeting them, that was real difficult to do back back then. I think it gives that personal element. If they get that VIP treatment and they get to come in, get to meet them, and it's like, oh, great, you know, and they, they get then more emotionally invested in that wrestler, especially if they've just been able to have, like, a five-second conversation with them. It's brilliant. Mm -hmm. It definitely works. Helps out T-shirts, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, back when I started, they, they, were, they were like, they were like, um, like superheroes that you you you're never you're never gonna get a chance to meet you know, but 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 now the the the, the events and the, the Q and A's and the, the 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 meet and greets they do, they're, they're endless you know they're they're, they're ongoing. I, I think there are a huge number of fans who are absolutely desperate to meet wrestlers. You saw the queue for um, Eric Bischoff today. I think we sold more VIP tickets um, than we did general admission because people are so keen on having a photo with Eric Bischoff. We're living in a really kind of social media centric world now where if you can get a selfie with somebody uh, and prove that you've met them, then you're going to get a bit of kudos yourself. So I, I think that, that plays into it. Um, ultimately, I, I don't think Q&As are necessarily the future of the business, but people like Eric Bischoff, uh, Paul Heyman, who was in the UK very recently, people with huge amounts of experience, I think people go to those, not just to learn about uh, Eric or Paul's history in the business, but to, to gain something more from that. So I, I think a lot of the lessons that, that Eric or Paul would speak about um, are things that people may even apply to their own lives uh, and now everybody's so interested in producing their own media especially with the rise of digital and people are making their own YouTube channels I think that people can learn an awful lot from from people like those two uh, just from what they're saying on stage and the wrestlers enjoy meeting the fans as well you know you, you look today and uh, this weekend we've got Hacksaw Jim Duggan uh, Ted DiBiase, Gail Kim, Colt Cabana, uh, Bob Holly um, this weekend we've got Edge and also Rob Van Dam. They all want to meet, you know, they like meeting their fans, they like interacting with the fans, you know, and it's kind of their way of giving back. Well, I think one, one of the best things in uh, anywhere uh, are places like this, the uh, Showmasters Brighton Comic Con, uh, because the fans can come and uh, meet the wrestlers and the, uh, the wrestling journalists and, uh, and interact with us. And uh, we had a Q&A earlier today that I thought was, uh, was really very well accepted. Um, and back in the United States, we have a lot of uh, dedicated um, wrestling conventions like Legends of the Ring, the big event, uh, WrestleCade, and I'm at a lot of those. So it's wonderful to have the fever of thousands of pro wrestling fans all coming together to uh, to meet and greet the stars that they grew up watching. Meet and greets, fan interaction, that's always been vital to the business. Now with, I call it just technology, social media, the internet, it's been pushed to the forefront because music, television, all forms of entertainment, not just professional wrestling, you have to have that constant fan engagement. Uh, and, and it just can't be on a Monday night or a Thursday night or one night a week. It's 24-7, 365 that the consumer, you're, you're, we call them at Global Force Wrestling, the amped army. Uh, they have to be engaged. They want to know what you're doing when you wake up, what you're doing when you go to bed. Constant uh, feed of information, and, and that's what we strive to do. But, but the fan interactions, it's vital to the business now. I think it's essential for the promoter's point of view in order to make money, to be honest with you, because there's very limited revenue streams for the promoter to employ in order to you know, maximise you know, making money on the show. And I suppose that, that is a good one, a good way for him to make money. It's an easy way for him to make money, really. Um, as to whether I agree with whether they happen or not, I agree with it in terms of baby faces doing it, as opposed to heels. Um, and I should think, I think it should limit who does it to like two or three guys so that next time you have another two or three guys. The problem I have is I do, I work for one promoter five times in the year 
every single time I do the meet and greet at the same venue, so every time it's the same fans. You know what I mean? So I, don't, I can't see the value of me doing it every single time. You know, maybe one time, and, or do photos in the ring or something like that, that that actually attracts more fans to do it. You cycle the talent you have to do it and everything like that. Then you keep the talent a little bit special as well. They want to be able to meet their wrestlers, um, find out what they think. They want to know every little thing that's happening backstage. They want to know every little minute booking detail because that part of the business is fascinating. I don't think they should know it. I don't. I. I don't think there should be as many uh, spoiler slides as there are. And you know what culture does news, and I'll hold my hand up to that. But uh, that's because you know we need to create revenue. Uh, but I feel like nowadays fans are so hungry for information that it hurts storylines. Long-term storylines, I think, get hurt because fans are finding out booking details all the time. And if they don't like a booking detail they hear backstage, they will attack the story uh, in a way that fans never used to do. Uh, so I, I, social media can be used for great purposes, like, thing, like making people aware of independent wrestling. There's lots more access to you know, streaming services like New Japan World, uh, Ring of Honor Command, or you know ICW, or you know us. We're on. We're online. Um, that new uh, push for online wrestling is great. Uh, it's just the informational aspect of it I find takes away from the investment in wrestling. Ignorance is bliss. Well, but I, I always try and watch everything live um, because I, I know if I don't, then I'm going to be spending the next day uh, avoiding the internet, you know, but, and and trying to avoid the results so so I can actually watch it. So I, I I have to I have to watch it live. I have to. Social media has changed the entire the entire wrestling journalism business. It used to be, you know, it was paper. You'd sit there and read a magazine. But now. Now people go on the internet and not only do they get wrestling news, but now they can post their own comments and start their own wrestling talk shows, start their own blogs. So it's increased the, uh, the view of what you can see and learn about in the business. The only thing I don't like about it is that there are a lot of people, or as you'd say here, a lot of blokes that get on the internet and they criticize everything when they don't really know anything about the business. For example, uh, one fan told me today, well, he doesn't like Vince McMahon because Vince said this, Vince said this. And I said, well, where did you, how do you know this? Do you know this firsthand? He said, I read it on the internet. Hell, it must be true, right? But um, the only bad thing about social media and pro wrestling or sports entertainment are people negatively writing about it. Uh, I've been doing this 50 years, and I'm still Mr. Positive about it. Without promotion, you don't have a show. If, if people don't know that you are there, then you have nothing. So we do the... Uh, first of all, we used to stand in the centre of town with flyers and just hand them out, and then we realised that actually it wasn't that targeted. So if we have a show at the Birchwood Leisure Centre, we get 2,500 flyers, and we leaflet drop to people's houses and we do the same in the Yarbor area. So we make sure that you're hitting the same streets all the time, especially the ones where you know that you've got a good customer base coming from. And then we do the social media. We have a lot of um, interaction with fans now, and that's one of the things that the committee brought up, was that we post things, but we don't seem to get anything back, so what can we do to change that? So we've changed the times that we post on Facebook. We've started spreading the storylines more into Facebook. Use the storyline on Facebook, um, yeah, that's done. That's, the, that's cool. really got crowd interaction. Fight Factory Weekly, the YouTube show, I think has had a massive effect on the amount of people coming to shows. Well, in, the, in the last three weeks of doing that, it's just, our subscribers have doubled. Yeah. So. so people like it. People like the EastEnders type thing. You know, if they've got a story and they can become emotionally involved, they come back. So we do that. Um, we email a lot of people. So the, the people who've bought tickets before, I email them, remind them that there's a show going on. I have to remind my husband that actually he does have other clothes other than his Fight Factory gear and his Dutch t-shirts because he is constantly promoting and I'm like, you know, you have other things you can wear, let's have a normal day where we're not doing something, but then it feels wrong. 
you know, it's now we just like eat, sleep, and just advertise constantly. But it is worth it when you see the numbers coming through the door, and that nervousness around shows reduces just slightly every single time. It will never go away. <laughs> and then when the when they start coming through the door, you do sign that. That relief, but social media is definitely. It's uh, just, I, I think for me, it's branding, not even yeah. just social media branding. Um, the Christmas market being a key thing in Lincoln, uh, you know, you've got however many million people who turn up to one small event. So we say to all the guys who've got Fight Factory gear, take yourselves up to the Christmas market, enjoy it, but please wear a Fight Factory hoodie yeah, or exactly. a t shirt or coat or something, you know. Um, People and, are going to be walking behind you. And it's you great, going people to are going to see it. They might not be from the area, but they might go, oh, look at that on YouTube or Facebook. And, and then social media does its own job. Yeah. Um, but just going up to the Christmas market, six of us in a little okay. group, or yeah. six of us, including the, not including the kids, um, walking around the Christmas market with however many thousand people and then getting recognised by little kids going, there's Annie Mae, there's Willie's really grumpy, there's Dutch. <laughs> you know, that, that's... That's amazing um, to, to be noticed in such a vast thing. Yeah. You know, it, it shows that branding is a big key. That you know, I had a hoodie on with my hood up, but as soon as they saw the logo, they're coming in front and looking at the face. Oh, I know who that wrestler is. Uh, so, so branding helps advertising, uh, selling the T-shirts to people. Key, also advertises, uh, and it's it's a key thing. Do stuff like Twitter. I feel like wrestlers wrestlers are more approachable now than they ever were. I don't think I would ever have dreamed of going up to The Rock. Um, you know, back when he was at Heyday, or Stone Cold Steve Austin, because these guys were badass and they never revealed any of their human side. There were no, you know, they never seemed human. Uh, like Kane, uh, why the hell would you go up to Kane? Um, and they're always going to be smart fans, but everyone's so smart now that I feel like, yeah, the fan interaction's going up because everyone knows it's Glenn Jacobs, not Kane. Uh, and so they want, and they recognise him, and they want to go up and they want to talk the business with him, and, and that's fine. I don't think fans have gotten more intrusive or anything like that. I just think that uh, the industry is so much more open. Uh, you've got so many more documentaries. WWE are producing more behind-the-scenes stuff than they ever have. With that comes an expectation from the fans. I think they are being welcomed in, and so yeah, I feel like a rise in meet and greets, a rise in fan interaction, is the necessary outcome of that because otherwise, yeah, I think it's a double standard. This coming April, 2016, will be my 30th year in the business. And to say that the, the, uh, the intelligence of the wrestling fan or the, yeah, the, 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 the massive knowledge that they have about the inner workings of our business has drastically changed. But one thing that really hasn't changed, if you go out and, 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 and really dig in and have a hell of a pro professional wrestling match, uh, win, lose, or draw, but the, if the effort is there, the reactions haven't changed. Matter of fact, they've probably gone up a notch uh, because there's, there, there's, there, there's, a, there's another level of respect for what we do. But has social media had an impact on how we're going to interact with fans in the future? Will it be about the UK touring scene, or is it going to be another way of finding engagement? Is the wrestling still key? Uh, it's really difficult to tell because uh, what cultures rise to where it is now took a year, just a year, which is crazy. Um, WCPW has only been around, it's only been talked about since March, and we're in August. Um, it's hard for me to say exactly what we'll be focusing on. WCPW is a big focus because the amount of organization and, and planning and, and scripting, and everything that goes into it takes a huge amount of time. But we have been able to keep um, you know, the output of uh, what we hope fans came to us in the first place for going. Um, it's just, I think it's a case of juggling plates. Uh, I don't want to add too many more plates to juggle because I think we've just about got it. I'm very proud of the quarterly magazine we do. I think it looks absolutely beautiful. Uh, you know, the lists keep keep coming out. I, I'm still proud that we're able to maintain that turnaround. Um, WCPW, the shows are getting better and better. We've got our first iPay-per-view in October called Refuse to Lose. Um, we, uh, yeah, that is a huge undertaking, and but with the purpose of growth, everything we want to just build up and build up. Uh, we're hoping to build the subscribers because that will give us the revenue we need to pursue other projects. Uh, we'd love to do uh, more in-depth stuff with the wrestlers. Uh, I know we'd love to do more shoot interviews. We'd love to produce some behind-the-scenes um, documentaries. Whether or not we have the capabilities to do that, 
we basically got to keep the fans happy and keep subscriptions high. And that's, so that is always going to be our primary aim. What do the fans subscribe to What Culture for? And then make sure they don't feel like we're taking that away. How much it helps, we don't know. Um, so just something like a paid-for advert. Some of our fans who... Uh, there's, there's one guy who works for the local radio station. Um, he'd not seen our posters until the week before, and he's made plans tonight. So yeah. um, that's really frustrating. You know, sometimes it's a great thing. You know, like when we do the charity shows, the social media activity just shoots through the roof um, because we're not just aiming at one specific crowd; we're aiming at anybody who gives some money. Um, so um, one thing that one of the guys does, DDI, is uh, he's very live active with live stream. Yeah. Um, he raised six hundred and fifty something pounds by just sitting in front of a computer. And don't take away from by just time. sitting in front of a computer, but by sitting in front of a computer for 20, seven hours. 27 hours, 27 just hour talking, live playing games, drinking, <laughs> whatever drinking else off. he did. You know, and that, that to us, that £650 to, to us to give to charity is, was, amazing. Was, was brilliant. So social media played a really important part there uh, because it, it captured new fans, it got other fans interested, fans who may not have been for a while, it got them back involved. Um, but then again, sometimes... It don't work. It makes you think you're peeing in the wind, you know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really hard to win social media over, so... And you have to be careful, because there'll always be somebody that criticises yeah. everything you're doing as well. So. There's, but there's also times where you think, like, you've put a paid, paid advert out on Facebook, and then nobody sees it. And it's like, right, why are we doing this if yeah. this isn't working? So, so social media can be your friend, but also your worst enemy when you're chucking money at it. So it is really difficult. But we use everything. Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter... Everything, you name it. MySpace? Nah, that's not a bit old for that though. <laughs> T touring is, is massively important for any form of entertainment, whether it be wrestling, um, uh, music, uh, it, you know, these Comic Cons. It, it, it is the lifeblood of the business on a cer certain level. So, live event touring is, is a very much of a priority for us and always will be. You got to have the exposure through all the different distribution methods, whether it be television, streaming service, online, social media. But touring is definitely uh, a, a huge component to being a successful promotion. It's interesting because the whole structure of shows and how promoters work now is totally different to, to 10 years ago. 10 years ago you had five or six touring promoters all running, so they'd circulate around. Now you've got a promoter in every different town, they tend to stick to their region. So it's far more splintered now, but there's a lot more shows because of it. Back at the magazines, we covered pro wrestling the way Sports Illustrated would cover baseball, football, soccer, uh, any of that. Today at OneWrestling.com, we report the news. You'll find very little, if anything, negative on OneWrestling.com because I still cover it like a sport. Um, so I started setting up What Culture Pro Wrestling in January of this year. Um, since then, we've put on, I believe, seven uh, live wrestling shows as well as a handful of Q&A's. Um, it's absolutely exhausting work. Um, I think we're going from strength to strength. You know, we're living in a, a great time. We're seeing a real resurgence of uh, independent wrestling all over the world, but I think especially Britain. There are companies uh, like Rev Pro, uh, like Progress, uh, hopefully like WCPW who are doing something really, really exciting uh, with the product. Um, we're seeing guys get recognition now uh, by the WWE um, who perhaps wouldn't have done so 10 years ago. It's now very easy to see um, matches online of guys who WWE may need to, may want to sign. Um, and we've seen that of course with the Cruiserweight Classic. If what we're doing with WCPW, if that gets guys who are terrifically talented, the guys on our roster like Martin Kirby, El Liguero, Marty Skrull, if that gets them more recognition and puts them to a wider platform and exposes them to a, a large audience. There's a danger of oversaturation in the market. You know, you, know, you, you possibly, and, and on live events now as well, there's always that danger of, um, okay, so we start off with one import, then the fans want two imports, then three imports, and four imports, and then it. And then before you know it, it's a show of imports and the British guys, and we have some amazing talent in the UK. Amazing talent. Okay, that I just did two shows over the last two days, 
um, a what culture, okay, one import, and the rest, all British guys, all Br British, uh, from, from, from the UK, from Scotland, from Ireland, um, and one American man, sold out, both nights, one, one man, one man, you know, but it's getting to the point where the fans, the fans are almost like, okay, well, we need more, we need more, we need more, we need more, you know, and it's, you know, they need to be re-educated, which is why Comic-Cons are great, you know, because, it, you know, this, so we're in London this weekend, um, a couple of weekends time, there'll be Sheffield, Glasgow, Amsterdam, Bournemouth, you know, so, Different, we can go to different towns and have different wrestlers there so people from those different areas can come and see because not everyone can you know jump on a train and, and go all the way up to Preston to see a show or or even come all the way into London to see a show do you know what I mean they might only be able to get to a local show or you know so, you know Rev Pro in Portsmouth might have you know a really good name on the show but someone from the Midlands or London can't get down to it so it's you know Places like this, so central, everyone, and people come from all over the world. People to, to these events, people come from all over the world. They don't just come from London, they come from uh, the Netherlands and Germany and uh, Russia and America, so it, it's all over. Yeah. There are people that come from America to these events to see American stars. Uh, well, I think the, the, the possibilities are still uh, uh, endless. But, um, I mean, me personally, I'd like to have a little bit of, um, you know, a bit, bit of a mystery to the, to the, to the, to the, um, to the industry. Um, but the way the world is now, I think, I think, you know, the, the interaction is only going to get bigger and bigger and, um, and, and, and in some people's eyes, better maybe. I don't know. After all, people come to watch wrestling, so that's the first thing you've got to concentrate on, isn't it? Um, keeping it going and maintaining the crowd level is all about evolving and generating and bringing new characters and new talent and making sure that things stay fresh. And the show is always different, and they're always entertaining, and people always see something they haven't seen before, be it, be it a specific wrestler or a type of match or whatever it might be. I think that's what people, you know, promoters have got to remember is that the show is really the wrestling show. That's what people come to see. and come to necessarily meet. It's a bonus to meet your, your wrestling, you know, your, your favourite wrestler or whatever. People first come first and foremost to watch the wrestling show. So they concentrate on that. It'll keep people coming. I, think. I mean, uh, yeah, they'll they'll buy tickets for the wrestling, you know, more than anything else. But I think because the because the the chance to meet them, it, it, it's always going to come along. You always hear wrestlers talk about the atmosphere that happens in the UK, how loud it is and energetic. But what is it about British wrestling fans that makes them unique? What is it like working in front of a UK crowd compared to the rest of the world? Fans seem really important to any kind of show from what we've been told, but how important are British wrestling fans and how different are they to the rest of the world? Obviously di different crowds for different promotions and uh, the ones you mentioned like the Red Pro and the London based audiences are very very much more educated, mid-twenties, you know, fans that are looking for that, that actual wrestling fix that maybe WWE didn't previously give them and that sort of thing, whereas a lot more across the country and you probably noticed it perhaps in Grimsby, I can't remember too much, so it's more a family audience that go, where it's the little kids that are WWE fans, they bring their parents along, and they just want to see wrestling, you know, they just want to be entertained, pantomime style, and goodies and baddies. So you have a very, you have those mixes in England, but both crowds uh, still enjoy themselves and still entertained by what they're, what they're given, and obviously the wrestlers work the style that's appropriate to the fans that are there, and we know generally, you know, if you're going to work with a pro show, you know what the fans are going to be like, I work for All Star, or on the camps, you know, Butlins or something like that, I know what crowds are going to be there as well, and you tailor your style on the match to suit. Um, but overall, I find British fans to be probably the fans that enjoy themselves the most when they They want to come along and have a good time, whereas maybe in America it's a little bit more of a struggle, you know, sometimes with that. Um, I think they've just been so oversaturated with wrestling that it, you know, they just want to see something new and they don't see it and they not going to applaud it. I have literally wrestled all over the globe. 
Japan has a different type of culture with their fan base. Puerto Rico, different type of fan culture. India, US, uh, Middle East. Uh, but the European fan base, I can remember coming to, uh, I got to wrestle at Royal Albert Hall in 1994, I believe. Uh, and that's as loud a building as I've ever heard. And it really woke me up to what the UK fan base is really all about. They are so passionate and uh, I call it soccer. You folks may call it football. Um, but, but that's a real prime example of just how invested they are in. If something they love and have a passion about, They'll let you know it, and I love that. Uh, as a promoter, there's nothing more you like than your villain to walk to the ring and a thunderous booze and your fan favorite walk to the ring and the building explodes with cheers. And it's, uh, it's, in my opinion, it's really the essence of the business. It's the prize fight. It's the title fight when you see two guys, good versus evil, throw down, face each other, and it is. It's the essence of the business uh, uh, is that rabid fan reaction. Um, British fans are certainly very, very noisy. They're certainly very, very vocal. I think it's why the WWE uh, continue to come here and plan on coming here more regularly. Um, yeah, they're, they're loud, but it makes it more fun, you know? You're going to see a better in-ring product if the fans are behind it because um, it helps the performers out. You know, the, the people in the ring will play up to the fans, um, and if the, the fans are really into it, then you're going to get a better match. Okay. UK fans are crazy, and I mean that in a great way. They are so enthusiastic about their pro wrestling. And, and some of the indie shows I go to, the, the small shows, I mean, the crowd of maybe 150, 200 people sound like there's 10,000 people in the building. They're great, ardent fans, and I love it. Uh, they, they know they're incredibly smart, and they're incredibly loud, and they're rowdy, and they pay their money, and they can do whatever the hell they like. Um, uh, globally, it, you know, we're, put, we're putting out um, a, a product with a lot of um, British wrestling fans in attendance and that causes trouble for some people. Some people prefer their fans to be a little bit quieter, but you try telling them that, you know. Uh, British wrestling fans, I feel, are, are louder because even though we've got lots of indie uh, promotions over here and some of them are so, are so great, like we're, we're, we're stepping onto a crowded scene when it comes to quality. Um, Fans just don't have that much access to um, some of the guys that we're able to get, thankfully. Uh, and we, and I feel like they're just hungrier for it. Like out in the states, maybe the saturation level, like maybe there's just a bit too much wrestling over there. Um, bringing live wrestling over here, or maybe it's just simply the football mentality. It's like we make noise when we're watching sports. That's just what we do. It, it's like we get beers in and we make noise. Uh, I, I don't know how much of it is national, how much of it's to do with um, the appetite of a wrestling fan. All I know is that when we put on wrestling shows, our fans do not stop from bell to bell. Whether you like that or you don't, that's just how the landscape is. Over the English fan base, you know, that you, you, you can pick them out by, by the chance that they do. And, and you know, it's very, very like, football orientated, you know. It's, that's where you can notice the, the difference between the two, two sets of fans. No, we, we, we know what we want um, and we, we want to, to make British wrestling matter. We look at the companies that do that, yeah, you know, and we take inspiration from them. We work alongside them. We provide people backwards and forwards. Um, if we think the company is doing right by the British scene, yeah. um, the ones who are doing it just to, to rip people off, we're not interested in the ones who are doing it with a lot of imports. We'll work alongside, but... That's, that's not our core value as a company, so we're going to stay around Lincolnshire for now, and then who knows what the future brings out. It, it's just been a case of we see where we are, we see how we improve, and if something bigger comes along where we think we can tackle it, then we'll, mm -hmm. then we'll put a battle plan in. And it, It's not something we think about overnight, it's something that, that takes time, but then yeah. once we are confident, we jump in very deep. <laughs> We've already got the date set that we know we have got everybody available to do next year and we're looking to jump in at the deep end and do four shows a month it's very scary i'm not entirely sure if i'll come out with my sanity intact but if you don't try you never find out and as long as we have the lincoln shows as our basis then we've got nothing to lose 
because we have our fan base here. And if we go out there and it don't work, oh well, you know, we've still got good enough relationships with other companies across Britain to be able to carry on with the success that we have. And as Dutch said, to, to work with companies that have got the same morals, that's what we're about. I'm not in it to make a million pounds. It would that's, be nice. It would be nice, but I'm not there to do that. I do it because I'm proud of what we've achieved and I'm proud of what he's achieved and the fact that he can come here every week and coach and the smile on his face that I see and the fact that my kids can get involved and it's a good family environment. That's all I want, you know. And if, if it makes a good success out of it afterwards, then fantastic, but that's just a bonus. Yeah, I think um, I think the UK market's absolutely um, on fire at the moment. Like, I mean, just I mean, you've got like ICW, you've got NGW, you've got Progress, which is kicking ass as well. And like, I mean, I'm missing out so many there as well. But it's like because I subscribed to me um, podcast with Wave Keller and, and um, Brian Alvarez, and one thing you hear when they get like a, an American wrestler on, like. Uh, the 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 say so much of like how the British scene's like on fire at the moment, and like how all the guys know how to work and stuff like that, which is it's great to hear, and like uh, yeah, it's just I guess now it's like it's at a time where wrestling fans who were my age, like who are my age, like have grown up and now have got disposable income and the you know they want to recapture the youth and they want to recapture how they felt when they were kids, so that I guess a lot of them are going to see. Um, wrestling and it doesn't have to be that like secret little secret anymore you're comparing a Wrestlemania which might have a hundred thousand people in a stadium you know to say coming to uh, to a London show that may hold you know 1500 people but those 1500 fans are extremely loud like what culture last night you know it wasn't a hundred thousand seat stadium do you know what I mean but it was packed, and they were loud, and they enjoyed the show, and they all went away happy, you know? So fans, I mean wrestling fans in particular, it doesn't matter if you're in America, or maybe Mexico, or the UK, or Scotland, or Ireland, you know? Um, Japanese fans are a little bit different, you know? But, you know, that's a cultural thing, you know? You, you could go, but they still have loud fans in Japan as well. So wrestling fans are wrestling fans the world over, you know. Same. Definitely out of all the countries I've been to. Um, maybe Japan I like, but yeah, uh, I think British fans are far, far better than anywhere else in the world. They just appreciate it more, so they just dare to have a good time. It's, it doesn't just follow through with wrestling. You watch a lot of other sports, darts or you know, other things. They go along and they're just having a, a the number of shows has vastly increased. We still do virtual leisure centre once a month, um, so we have our local fan base there, and then we have spread out across Lincolnshire. Um, we've then made here the engine shed our home four times a year, um, and we try and run that along with the pay per views and stuff like that because then people get like a day of wrestling. So these these shows are for the absolute avid fan because they're like, yeah, we can do a full day of it. Um, but now we've got two wrestling rings, steel cage, so we're now doing ring higher, steel cage higher, you name it. We've just kind of expanded. Some of the guys are out working independently now, yeah. they've been trained from the ground up. So they're, um, they're really making progress. Yeah, it's, it's so busy, you know, just, uh, it's now at the point where Becca had to leave her um, daytime, job daytime job to come and do this. Because we just got snowed <laughs> under um, from the ring house, from me working still independently, to the guys working independently and they're like we don't know how to handle promoters so can you deal with our emails and yeah it's just non-stop <laughs> yeah hard work so it looks like british wrestling has got a very bright and exciting future but before we finish i'd love to find out what it was about wrestling that made everyone become a fan when i was growing up um pro wrestling again it was the the wrestling magazines that i read growing up uh kept me uh, abreast of all the information to keep me as a fan but it was great because it was good guys against bad guys very clear cut who was the good guy who was the bad guy and i always went to see who was going to uh who was going to win out of the good guys and the 
bad guys. What keeps me interested today as a fan is that although the window dressing and the marketing and everything has changed, what hasn't changed is that you get two or four people or a battle royal in the ring of these amazing athletes that are trying to put on an incredible show and there's nothing else like pro wrestling or sports entertainment that can entertain you and give you the feeling what a rush, like the Road Warriors used to say, like anything like pro wrestling. Now, I, I used to watch it when I was I know, 13 or 14 years old, when it first being started being broadcast on Sky, um, and just was a fan from then. I did judo up to almost Olympic level, um, until I was 20, and then I started training to be a wrestler there. Because I, I, the whole point of me doing judo was to be a wrestler anyway, because back when I started wrestling, you had to have some kind of legitimate background because otherwise you just get beaten up in the ring every night because how they used to train guys when I started is not how people get trained now. They just used to go in there and you used to have to basically fight for whatever holds you could get until you got to a point where they respected you enough to be able to allow you to start working in with them. I watched wrestling from the age of maybe seven or eight. So I watched the World of Sport on ITV. Then my mum used to take it me to watch it, so and, and I was immediately engrossed in wanting to, to watch the wrestling every week on television. Um, there was a, a buzz there, there was an excitement, there'd, there'd, be, there'd be a build up, there'd be a you know, there'd be this big build up, and then it like then there'd be a live event in you know where I was from. It was like, oh my, I have to go to the bath hall, I have to go to the bath hall, I have to get mommy, you have to take me, I have to go to see the wrestling, where's the wrestling. So you go there and, and the excitement would be there and there would be two guys or four guys or whatever in the ring, you know, you know, kicking the crap out of each other, you know, and it's just that, it's excitement. And then when I got into the wrestling, you know, you can't describe the adrenaline or, or the high you get from like being behind a curtain and, you know, they're playing you some music and then you're going out and then you're going out to perform in front of the crowd. I got involved in wrestling when I was, I can't remember, I was young. Um, I went to a few training sessions in Nottingham. Um, I was also doing a bit of bodybuilding, martial arts, um, working three jobs, I think, at the time. So it's something that had to go on the back burner. Um, there was casual training, but it was nothing massively serious. Um, I ended up breaking my back um, and having to take a lot of time off everything. Um, and the decision to uh, recover was to use nature and to have a goal. And my goal was to get into wrestling and take it more seriously. I was asked to perform a show for my mum. She'd never made any of my shows. She asked if we could do one where she could sit kind of on her own because she was battling cancer. So she couldn't risk being around people who maybe had colds or coughs or anything, you know, where she could catch something. Um, so we said, right, we'll book a big hall, um, put on a show, um, maybe sell 100 tickets and she can watch from a distance so she won't embarrass me and so she won't <laughs> catch anything. Um, so we arranged to do this in the, I think it was the February we arranged to do it. Um, and we spoke with the other promoter, we spoke with a couple of performers, um, but no one really wanted to help with the promotion side of it it just came down to us and that, that was scary <laughs> um, she passed away in the june so our goal of maybe raising 500 a thousand pound was like right let's sell 400 tickets let's make it, make it our wrestlemania and do it every year and and that's what we did and from then it was just a case of evolve and develop everything we do, learn from our mistakes and just implement the, the learning curve in every single show that we do from then on. Um, and it's just grown from there. The first event I ever watched was SummerSlam 88. And from there it, it, it grabbed me and hooked me, I was hooked. I mean, back then it was all Hulk Hogan and, and Ultimate Warrior and uh, Randy Savage. They were like the big stars, you know, so they, they're the ones that, that, that really appealed to me, you know. Um, the guy that I work with, he started to come down and I decided to come along with him for a bit of moral support and find out what it was all about really because his hobby and life is wrestling and it's, to be honest, it's never been a big part of mine. So I thought I'd come down and see what it was all about. Um, 
come down to LFFW, welcome with open arms. Like, everyone down here was really nice. So I just felt instantly part of the family, really. Um, I cast myself as you know, quite physical and athletic. So being in the ring and taking some of the bumps, I felt like I took to it quite naturally. Um, really enjoyed it from there, got a bit of a bug. Um, and then another close friend of mine who's into wrestling, he had just got back from working away. Went out for a bit of a drink, a bit of a catch up. And he said, oh, I've always wanted to go to WrestleMania. So I was like, ah, I've got the money, so let's go. And this was a week, so well, eight days before WrestleMania. So it was like, all right, so next day, booked the tickets, a couple of days later, flew out to WrestleMania in San Francisco. <laughs> And I've been to sporting events all over the world, been to the Rugby World Cup, England, everything like that. And by far, it was the best sporting thing that I've ever been to. It blew everything out of the water. We were just talking about it, me and a friend talking about it, and, and we thought, you know, it'd be, be great to go to WrestleMania at least one time. And um, WrestleMania 28 come around. And then they announced the main event a year in advance. Uh, it was uh, The Rock against uh, John Cena. And then that's when, when we decided, think, well, let's do it. After watching that, that's, that's it now. Network, watching it, every, everything is, is now wrestling. My girlfriend, I think she might be getting a little bit annoyed with me because that's it. It's all we talk about at home. My daughter's into it, John Cena pyjamas, the lot. So everything, wrestling has just sort of taken over my life from that stuff, from coming down here to going out to America. That's it, it's wrestling, it's a massive part of my life now. I hated wrestling. Wrestling was not my bag. I just did it because I wanted to support him and it was something that he really enjoyed. But now, going out there and like turning my character on, I love that. Um, but then the hard work that goes on behind the scenes of milling around and just, it never stops. I love wrestling because it, it on the best days, it makes you feel like you did when you first watch it when you were six, um, or the first, or whatever. So I like wrestling because when it's done right, um, you forget that you're an adult, you forget that you've got council tax to pay, you forget that you've got a job to do. Like, mm -hmm. it, can just, it can just take you in the moment. And so uh, I like wrestling because when it's done right, it's captivating. It's always been fun, no matter how terrible the storylines get or ludicrous the, the, the product can be. I've, I've just always loved it. I'm so unbelievably passionate about it. For me, the spectacle, the, 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 the entertainment value is, is, is uh, for me, second to none. So there you have it, wrestling fans. You're hugely important. You're one of the main parts of every single show. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed it, I can't wait to see you at future wrestling events. We just see the uh, atmosphere, I mean it's good family fun, there's no, there's no hassle, there's no like real violence, it's just it's real good entertainment, they can fight back to they do a really good job, and every time we actually yeah. It's like cool moves and stuff, so... I always looked it since I was young, so... Well, oh, thank you. He's pulled in for... Oh, how long have you been following? At eight and time. Long time, so yeah. Well, you know it's fake, but it looks so real. You never know what's going to happen. You never know who's going to turn up. How'd you like that? Um, we're reacting to Joey Osborne. I like, I like Rupper. <laughs> I did the eye, actually. I love the atmosphere and the storylines. I love the music. Yeah, I That like makes the, music. the show. Yeah. Still case. Still case. Yeah, the first one we've got in it, though. Roman Reigns. AJ Styles.
John Cena. I was about five, six years old when I got into wrestling. Uh, it was big at the time. Hulk Hogan, Ultimate Warrior, Macho Man. Um, we used to collect the stickers at school, buy the action figures. Me and my best friend, we always make sure that we're together for the big four events. So, Royal Rumble, WrestleMania, SummerSlam, Survivor Series. Every year, wherever we are, we'll get together and make sure that we're, we've got our beers in, we've got our junk food, and we you know, watch TV till silly o'clock in the morning. It's awesome. come track you down and, and put point your camera in your face and uh, ask you questions. I'm not even a wrestling fan, I don't know. <laughs> He's just locked us in this room. <laughs>